So we've talked about bacteria viruses, and they work very similar. Animal viruses just do one or two little different things. So these are going to be viruses that affect us. And if you remember back from endocytosis and exocytosis, endo means stuff coming in, exo means stuff going out. The way that they're going to come in, one of the ways that they could come in is through endocytosis. And what will happen is the virus will wait on the outside and trick the cell into saying, hey, I'm something really good, let me in. The cell will go ahead and gulf that outer area through pineocytosis and bring it inside the cell. And then the virus comes out and attacks. The other thing it can do is fusion where the virus will attach to the outside of the cell and push its way in. And then now that the virus is inside the cell, it comes and attacks. But I'm going to show you this in reverse first, and I'll show you this in the way that the picture is set up. So here's the virus, and it's found the host cell. And it says, hey, this is the cell I need to. Um, it's got the markers that tell me that this is, let's say, a liver cell in a human. So I know that I'm in the right spot. What it's going to do is do this thing called budding, where it fuses to the outside of the cell and pushes its way in. The genetic material will come out, and now it's inside the cell. And now in the cell, what it's going to do is become, remember, it makes a factory to make way more of itself, the proteins, the genetic material, etc. So now it's time for it to leave. And it wants to leave in a way that um, it can trick other cells into thinking it's friendly. So keep in mind, this is the host cell. This is, let's say, that liver cell in my example. It's got all the sugars that say, hey, I'm a liver cell in a meal. Please, you know, don't attack. So what happens is now it's time for it to leave. So it basically pushes its way out and leaves with a little bit of coating from that liver cell. And remember how the liver cell has these little sugars on it that says, hey, I'm friendly, I'm a I'm Anil's liver cell, leave me alone. Well, now it's taken that almost like a, a coat and it's using that to hide. It's gonna go find another cell and dock to it and say, hey, I'm friendly, you know, let me in. And the cell will say, sure, you've got all of the right sugars. You have everything that tells me that you're a human liver cell. Apparently, you're friendly. Let's go ahead and fuse together. And then during that process, it, it unleashes its genetic material. We notice that viruses affect us in different ways. So for instance, we have the influenza virus, like I have. It'll bind to stuff on the outside and trick the cell to sort of coming in. Don't worry about any of these details. These are more for uh, microbiology when we cover that. So they're going to basically find these outside pieces, dock to them, and then eventually let themselves in. And we've already talked about how these viruses go through. Um, they basically take these, these markers that they've obtained from another cell, dock to the outside of our cell, fuse, come in through endocytosis. When the cell, when the virus is ready to leave, it'll basically push out by fusion and it'll have its genetic material come out. The genetic material is going to give it two codes. One, it's going to make a whole bunch of proteins so it can assemble. And two, it's going to start making all the genetic material it needs so it can start to put itself together. So all the raw materials, all the proteins it needs are starting to put together. Those capsids, when it's making more genetic material, it's going to coat it. And eventually what's going to happen is it's going to start to fuse to the outside of the cell. And by doing that, now not just is it going to be the virus, but it's taking that outside coat and that outside coat is the thing that tells other cells, hey, I'm friendly, leave me alone, don't attack me. So now what happens is it attaches to another host. Let's say this is a brand new host. This guy says, oh, yeah, you're friendly because you've got all of the sugars that tell me that you're this type of cell and you belong in me. So it attaches, 
and then this whole process starts again and again and again. Let's talk about how classify how we classify these guys. It turns out that we can do it. Um, we have to classify these things because um, anything that is really um, new and weird and we only probably know about six or seven percent of the viruses on the planet and they adapt so quickly that by um, categorizing them we can already say well we've tried these drugs on this type of bacteria or virus and by doing that we know that these drugs work on this one and these ones don't so by putting them into categories really does cut down the time of um, how to treat these because a lot of these viruses are brand new they adapt so quickly so we can do it from genetic material so is it dna is it rna is it single stranded is it double stranded we could do it by shape is it that helical shape that's sort of this part right over here is it flat is it um, spherical is it complex complex is going to be this whole virus like that does it have the presence of an envelope, which is that extra coating on the outside that some have, and that envelope comes from it attacking a host? The kinds of cells that they attack, do they sell, attack animals, bacteria, and then from there we can go what type of bacteria or what type of animal, and then finally size.